Shalom, shalom, to those far and near. Shalom, shalom, to all who hear. Shalom, 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 shalom. Shalom, everyone. I'm Bonnie Moore. I'm president of Maranatha Ministries. And Maranatha means come, Lord Jesus, and God has good news for you. And we're going to share it today, right from his wonderful, omnipotent word. Everyone say, wow, wonderful, omnipotent word. For his words are life to those who find them and health all their flesh. And this is true. So today, come get healed, come get blessed. We're going to share a screen and get right into today's lesson life lesson and we're still on the series beloved forgiven blessed and favored the story of your life and today we're going to look at forgiven so let's sing mercy song oh lord when you forgive my sins you forget them too Wash clean in the blood of your precious son, spotless I stand before you. For as far as the east from the west, so far have you put them from me. Though my sins were crimson as scarlet, white as wool they now be. Your mercy reaches all mankind, and your words are true. That when I confess my guilt and my sin, you make me holy like you. For as far as the east from the west, so far have you put them from me. Though my sins were crimson as scarlet, white as wool they now be. So now my soul no longer looks back with remorse and shame. For he became sin who knew no sin, so my guilt no more would remain. For as far as the east from the west, so far as you put them from me. Though my sins were crimson as scarlet, white as will they now be. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus did that for us. Beloved, forgiven, blessed, and favored. Everyone say, that's the story of my life. So as I said, this is life lesson number four, forgiven. Say, I am forgiven. Not just forgiven, my sin's gone like it never was, like the mist in the morning sun. Born by him who knew no sin, but became sin for us all. Jesus, Jesus, who makes it as if man never fell. Jesus, Jesus, the light where darkness can't prevail. You know, don't ever say, I'm in darkness, I'm confused, I'm in the dark. You're not. If you're in Jesus, you're in the light. He said, no follower of mine will ever walk in darkness. He will have the light of life. So if you've made Jesus your Lord, and if you haven't, I'll give you the opportunity today. Then say, I never walk in darkness. I have the light of life. 
So rejoice. And that is something that you may have to make yourself do. But when you do it, you will find joy in him. He'll give you his joy. And he already has. He shared it with us, the last, light of the Last Supper. He gave us his peace. And he gave us his joy. And he gave us his body. He gave us his blood and put us in covenant with him and through him in an everlasting covenant of love with God our Father. So, and the lesser is raised up to be like the greater in a covenant. So we're raised up to be like Jesus and seated with him in heavenly places. Now let's look at some of these scriptures because they're wonderful. We'll feed on those. Feed on forgiveness. In Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us. It's from Ephesians 1, 7 through 8. Redemption. We're redeemed from the curse of the law. We're redeemed from eternal death, from poverty, from sickness, from disease, from pain. We're redeemed. We don't have to put up with those things. We say to Satan, no, no, you don't. By his stripes, I'm healed. I've been redeemed. Redeemed from the curse of the law. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He'd never sinned. That's why he was a perfect sacrifice for our sins. And that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4. You know, everything in Christ's life was prophesied ahead of time in the Old Testament, every detail of it, every shadow in the Old Testament takes its substance in Christ. So let's look at the next one. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Because he lives, we live. He took his eternal life in the flesh that he had because he was not born of Adam's seed, but again of the word. The word became flesh. And Adam at first had been born from the word. He was imperishable. He had an eternal life in his flesh. But when he rejected the word of God and was born again from a lie and gave his life to a lie, that's perishable. Lies are perishable seed. God's word is truth. It's imperishable seed. So you get born again by that word in you, planted in your heart, and your spirit comes alive to God and dead to sin, and you have eternity in you. But if you stay just born from below, as biologically, you're from the seed of Adam, and it's perishable because it believes lies. And people that are not born again, they're still under the lie that they can be adequate without God. You can't. He's our source. He's our supply. And I'm so glad he is because he's unlimited. Now, we're limited. He's unlimited. So if you attach to him like a branch to the vine, you will bear fruit and it will be eternal. And their sins and their lawless deeds, I'll remember no more. That's under the new covenant. Jesus has taken our sins, taken our lawless deeds, all in his own flesh. And then he had to die because the wages of sin is death. He had an eternal life to give, though, for the eternal life we lost. An eternal life for an eternal life. And we were set free of condemnation. So God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them. And he committed to us, who've received the good news, the word of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5.19. So be reconciled with God. He sent his son to do that. He's got nothing against you because Jesus, what? He made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf so we might become the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. What a great exchange. He took our sins. We took his righteousness. It's too wonderful. This is the best deal ever. Anyone that doesn't take Jesus as Lord just doesn't understand what they're missing. Because as he told the Pharisees, if you don't 
believe that I am, you will die in your sins. You have to receive a gift for it to be yours. So you receive forgiveness. You forgive, you for, re, you receive Jesus as your Lord. And then you get the whole package deal. You get forgiveness. You get his word. You get to do his works. You get healing. You get everything that goes with salvation. And he becomes wisdom for you, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Your body will be raised on the last day. You will not stay in the grave. Your spirit and soul, they will go to heaven if you die before he comes again. And then you will be clothed with your immortal, glorious, wondrous body of heavenly substance but looking just like you do, but perfect. And that will be for eternity, which is a long time. It is forever. This life is only a test. Please pace it. It's, are you going to choose life? He Moses told them, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. And we could add love or hatred, you know, forgiveness or unforgiveness. Every day you can choose. Choose life, choose love, Choose forgiveness that you may live and your descendants too. Now, in Christ, you're forgiven forever because forgiveness is sin is based on his taking all your sins on himself and receiving the punishment for them in your place. And this was by substitution and identification. You are in Christ when you take him as your Lord and you're clothed in his merits in what he did becomes yours. Everything he has, he emptied himself so that you could become rich with everything that he has. You are a joint heir with Christ. He makes you a child of God and puts you on the same level of reception as he has. It has pleased the Father to give you the kingdom. You have to learn what you have or you won't use it. Now, the wages of sin is death, but he shed his precious blood to death. And he went to hell for us. But read Psalm 2. God raised him up. He said, into your hands, O oh, Father, I commend your, my spirit on the cross. Because with the Holy Spirit in him, he could not go to hell. And that's why you'll never go once you've taken Jesus as Lord. Sincerely, from your heart, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And it has nothing in common with the demon or hell. So don't put up with depression. That's a spirit of hell. Rebuke it. Say, oh, no, you don't. Not on me. It's a spirit of hell, and I'm not going there. I have no reason to partake of you. I have the anointing of the oil of joy. That's how he anointed Jesus. You'll read that in the New and the Old Testament, Psalm 45, 7, and Hebrews chapter 1. I believe it's line 9. I could be wrong. But he's anointed with the oil of joy. So you have joy. Say it now. I have joy. Unspeakable. Filled with glory. I'm achieving base goal, my salvation. Now, do you remember what John the Baptist called Jesus? He saw Jesus coming to him to be baptized. And he said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John 1, 29. Do you know why that means? Do you know why they call Jesus the Lamb of God? Do you know about the Passover? Do you know about the sacrifices of the tabernacle of Moses? These were teaching us about who Jesus is and his mission to be the sacrifice for our sins and to take them away like they never been. So it's not on your merits. You don't have to worry so much about it if you've been good enough. Jesus has been good enough. More than that. More than that. And when you receive him, that righteousness he has becomes yours. And he takes your unrighteousness on himself. And he knew what to do with it. He was crucified for it. So um, the Old Testament is manifested in the flesh in the New Testament. And it's the foreshadowing of the good things to come in Christ. So God made covenant made it with Abraham, uh, Isaac, Jacob, you know, and then that was the spoken word, but he sealed it with sacrifice. If you read Genesis, you know, uh, 
you'll see in chapter 14, he meets the high pri the priest of God, the most high Melchizedek, who's the, that's an appearance of the Holy Spirit. And then he anoints Jesus as a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek, king of righteousness, king of Salem or of peace. And uh, Abraham did the burnt offering and the peace offering. And then these were codified later by Moses in uh, when Mount Sinai, he made covenant with the, became the written word. You see, with Abraham, there was a covenant of the spoken word, and it was established by sacrifice of the clean animals. Um, and then they walked, Abraham actually went into a trance. He went to sleep, and God and Jesus walked the path of the blood between the split animals. And you see the smoking pot and the flaming torch. So you see God the Father, those appeared on Mount Sinai and God the Son. And later Jesus walked that bloody path with his own blood, dragging the cross up Calvary. But we didn't see it, but the Father was walking with him. Just like Abraham walked with Isaac up that same path of the cross. Uh, well, he went to Mount Moriah and uh, was willing to act it out to sacrifice his beloved son as God would later do. Because could he do anything, he said, without showing it first to Abraham, to whom he entrusted to his line to become, according to the flesh, the line of the Messiah, of God's son, coming to do just what he showed him in Isaac. But then... Abraham said to Isaac when he said, here's the wood, here's the fire, uh, but where's the sacrifice? Where's the lamb? And he said, God himself will provide the lamb. And that's what John the Baptist was calling Jesus, the one that Abraham had prophesied on Mount Moriah, that God himself would provide the lamb for the burnt offering. Now, the burnt offering in the tabernacle of Moses and also um, before that, when they do a burnt offering or a holocaust, was what the sinner would do. So somebody sinned. So here we are. So the one who'd sinned would bring an unblemished clean animal, like a lamb. The Passover had to be a lamb. And the priest would examine the lamb, not the sinner. So you see Jesus, examining Jesus, he's sinless. He's perfect. He's unblemished. He never did a sin thought, word, or deed, even though he was one like us and emptied himself of his God powers. Now, Adam was born from imperishable seed when he was first created. He was created, uh, you know, with no sin in him, but he sinned. That pride, that, that rejection of God came up and the free will, and he didn't pass the test. But Jesus passed the test. Remember in the wilderness, the devil tried to get him to do what Adam had been guilty of, but he couldn't. And Jesus was in continual communication with the Father, and we can be too. He said, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give constant thanks. You need to be know he's with you and be communicating. God inside-minded, this will keep you from sin. it also keep you following, following his directions you know, in your life. So you would lay your hand on the head of the lamb, the perfect lamb, you know, the unblemished little lamb. And the sinner's guilt, shame, blame would transfer to the lamb and the lamb's purity would transfer to the sinner. There's a supernatural exchange. And then they had to kill the lamb because it had all the sin on it, which is a sin's death. So the sinner himself slit the throat of the lamb. And then the priest would put it on the bronze altar that was at the entrance of the tabernacle of Moses. And bronze is the metal for judgment. And they would completely burn it up. It's like you did a barbecue, but you burn the thing until it was ash. And then those ashes would be taken outside the camp to blow away. Your sin's gone, you see. But the blood of a lamb or a sheep or a goat or a bull it wasn't eternal life. It wasn't that kind of blood. It couldn't take away the sin entirely. It was a credit card. It made the credit payment by faith. 
but the real debt had to be paid. And that says in Colossians 2 that Jesus took our debts and nailed them to the cross and paid them in full because the wages of sin is death. So he paid your debt. He paid my debt. You don't have your sin anymore if you've received that gift of Jesus. You can reject it and want to die in your own sins, but why would you do that? There's no way you're going to offer an eternal life for the eternal life that Adam lost for all of us. You cannot. You don't have one. But you do when you take Jesus as Lord. Then you have an eternal life. And it's from him. It's from him. Because he lives, we live. God raised him from the dead with all our sins gone and put that Holy Spirit back in him that he gave into his hands on the cross with complete trust that the Father would raise him up when everything was satisfied for us. And he did. So it wasn't the sinner's merits or works of penance, but the quality of the lamb that he brought to sacrifice in his place that determined the forgiveness. You see what God was teaching them and teaching us. It's the quality of Jesus by which we're forgiven. And he's perfect. He's perfect. Now here is the scripture, but we've just described it of how they brought the burnt offering. And this is in Leviticus chapter one, one through five. I love the book of Leviticus because every one of those sacrifices, the burnt offering, the grain offering, the peace offering, the Thanksgiving offering, the sin offering, the guilt offering, they're all about Jesus. He took that all for us, all of them, all five of them. So um, isn't it wonderful that we have Jesus and that you have come on this broadcast and that you have done the biggest favor for yourself, if you've done it, that anyone can do for themselves, and that's take Jesus as Lord, because then you know you'll be with God in the most beautiful kingdom that we can't even envision or imagine, because we can't even know what it's like, a world with no death, no pain, no aging, no sin, no danger, no crime, no corruption, nothing dying, no dirt, you know, we don't even begin like to to know what that's like, but we will know if we've taken Jesus as Lord. And uh, so when he sinned, you got your sacrifice, but then it was only for unintentional sins. If your sin was premeditated, like even today, the difference in the law and uh, purposeful, no, that was death, but Jesus qualified us all on the cross before him were the Romans, the Gentiles, the Jews, and the church, and John and Mary and the women there. And he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. So he qualified us for every sacrifice under the Old Testament because it, he made us all unintentional sinners. He said, if we really knew what we were doing, we wouldn't do it. And that's true. If you really could see ahead to heaven and eternity, you would only follow Jesus because that's where you'd, you'd say, I want that. I want the God who's love. I want to be judged responsible that I wouldn't turn away, that I would be loyal, that I can go there, that I can go there. I want to pass the test. I want to choose life and not death. I want to forgive and not hold grudges. I want to love like he loves. And he'll help me by pouring his Holy Spirit in my heart. So I think, you know, we're very close to the time we have to close. But we have this hope that Jesus went behind the veil. Remember the veil ripped in two in the temple when he died, showing that we can all, with boldness, go right to the very throne room of God with our great high priest Jesus and be heard because we're forgiven. And we're forgiven. We're forgiven. All of you who are watching, if you've got something bother you, just know this. You're forgiven. Return to the Lord. He's already paid with the blood of his son. He doesn't remember your sins or offenses anymore. The only thing that will keep you out of heaven now is not believing in Jesus, that he took your sins. So let's pray the prayer of salvation. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. He died for me. I believe you raised him from the dead. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit and lead me in that beautiful life you prepared for me in advance 
that I might enjoy it. And everybody said, Amen. So hold up your hands in Shin for Shaddai, the letter Shin. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, give you his grace. The Lord smile upon you and give you shalom, 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 everyone. I'll see you for our next life lesson. Thank you so much for joining me. This is really only the beginning. I make all things new. Resurrection joy is there for all of you. I have promised you eternal life, and it is there for you in Jesus. You have only to receive him. Mm -hmm.